Okay, so watching Andrew Garfield come back for Spider-Man No Way Home was one of the best moments I've experienced in a cinema for a long time. Yeah, that might be because theatres were closed for a good two years, but beyond that, the subtext and meaning behind the scenes carried much more than it being just a simple cameo. Throughout this video, I want to break down why Garfield's return is so iconic, and all of the factors that contributed to what is very much seen as his rise and fall. The entire thing is pretty much an underdog story, but don't call it a comeback because the guy has always been excellent, we just didn't know what we had until it was gone. Now if you agree then please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into the video. Okay, so Andrew Garfield was very much seen as the black sheep of the Spider-Man family. Tobey Maguire very much had one of the best comic book trilogies of all time and though his third film is often looked down upon, the first two helped to save the genre in a time when we were still reeling off Batman and Robin. Maguire was a very big part of people's childhoods and his first film especially managed to recapture the origin story from the comics and update it in an exciting and modern way. Sadly his fourth film was shelled and Sony ended up rebooting the character with Andrew Garfield whose first film released just a mere five years after Spider-Man 3. The creative team leaned too heavily into the gritty reboot thing which was fashionable at the time due to the Dark Knight but this didn't really fit the character. They also had the difficult task of telling an origin story that had already been nailed and though I do think his first film has aged well over time, when it was initially released it felt very much like a movie nobody asked for. Whilst all this was going on, Marvel Studios had managed to build the phase one of their characters and in the same year that Sony launched their film, the Avengers pretty much completely changed the comic book genre. Fox had also just released X-Men First Class the year before and it just felt like Sony were trying to ride the coattails of everyone else. Two years later we got the amazing Spider-Man 2 which, though enjoyable, felt a bit overstuffed. You had the weird Electro story, the Green Goblin one, and Peter trying to solve his parents' disappearance, which made it just feel kind of middling. It also attempted to tackle the death of Gwen Stacy, and though I absolutely loved this in the film, the movie disappointed a lot of fans at the time. However, the person who shot in the role was Andrew Garfield, and it felt like he was just getting the wrong material rather than actually being bad. For me, Garfield felt like he was ripped right out of the Ultimate Comics, and he definitely had the best costume. However, he was competing in a world where we expected comic book films to all be connected and at the time Maguire was still held up as the best of the best of the best sir. Now Sony were due to announce the amazing Spider-Man 3 at Brazil Comic Con but after Andrew called in sick, the whole film was scrapped. It would be just another two years until Tom Holland appeared as the character in Civil War and Garfield was brushed under the rug as being the person who neither started anything or had a connected universe. However, the internet loves to rally for those that they think deserve a second chance and much in the same way that the Snyder Cut gained a big following, his version of Spider-Man did too. Now Garfield's return got the biggest reaction when I was in the theatre and though that might not have been the case in every cinema, I think it was probably the biggest talking point upon leaving the film. There's several reasons for this and I think one of the big ones is how it's filmed and revealed. In the scene we watch as Ned and MJ wish that they could find where Peter Parker is and in doing so, they open a doorway to one of the versions that was brought across during the spell. Down a dark and shadowy alleyway, we see somewhat the silhouette of Spider-Man and he slowly jogs towards the camera. You can slightly make out his suit and on a first watch, this is done deliberately to make you look at it to see if you recognise who it is. You're kind of squinting as he runs towards the frame and then as he jumps through the portal, you recognise the suit and then just as you have that aha moment, he unmasks and reveals his face. Garfield even poses and breathes like it's the end of either an amazing dance routine or a magic trick in which the person performing it has just pulled off the impossible. Though many of us knew he was coming back, this moment was still incredible and for as much as it worked in the context of the film, it also worked really well outside of it. I just wish we could see Peter. Now if you visited the internet at any point in 2021 then you probably saw that Andrew Garfield was shown in full costume, on set filming what was clearly his comeback. However, he denied being in the film at every opportunity and it very much became a meme where he was constantly saying that he wasn't the werewolf. I heard about it and I did see it and it's a photoshop. I promise you I am not the werewolf. Are we going to see you and Toby and Tom in the new movie? I want to get really clear. I want this is this the unequivocal yes no answer. I did not get a call. Without seeing the movie, nobody could out and out disprove it, and we all know deep fakes are at a point now where it would be possible to pull something off like this if you had the time to do it. 
Thus, people just kept hammering away at Garfield, but he never budged, and instead just said he was looking forward to the movie. This definitely helped to add to the oh shit moment, and it's from here that MJ very much becomes the voice of the audience. She can't believe it's happening to the point that she even throws bread at him, and you're kinda stuck much like how she is, almost questioning if it's really him. We wanna see him be Spider-Man, climb on the ceiling, do something crazy, because it's a scene you can't really believe is actually happening before your eyes. They could have brought him back in a big action moment at the Statue of Liberty, but instead they've toned things down, put it in a home setting, and brought both him and Toby back. Our homes are very much where we grew up watching the characters, and it's here that we fell in love with them. I used to go around my grandma's house every Saturday, and I'd sit and watch superhero shows while she made me and my sister dinner. Because of my memories like this, I massively relate with the setting, and it's almost like they're bringing him back in the place that I fell in love with Spider-Man. Ned's grandma really adds to the scene, and there's several generations in this moment, showing how Spider-Man has touched us all. This was so difficult to pull off for Marvel Studios, and though they had the clout to do it, there were a lot of things that they had to do to get the old cast members back. Both Garfield and Maguire were people who didn't exactly leave the role on the best of terms, but in Kevin Feige we trust. The guy managed to get both Garfield and Tobey Maguire back, and have them interact with one another in very meaningful ways. The pair could have both been reduced to just being cameos that pop in and leave, but they have quite big parts in a movie that was very much about the Tom Holland version finally stepping into the role. The return of Andrew is iconic because it not only rights the wrongs of the past in terms of how he left the role, but it also closes several arcs for his character. He was someone who watched the love of his life die in front of him because of his own actions, and his vision of Peter getting to save MJ really means a lot. It all expands from this moment in which he returns, and I love how it all comes together from here on out. Andrew's return is iconic, and obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the scene in the comments below. We're running a competition and giving away 3 copies of Spider-Man No Way Home on the 15th of April, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and comment below with your thoughts on the scene. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of all the easter eggs in Spider-Man No Way Home, which will be linked on screen right now. We had some really cool cameos in it, it's one of our best videos ever yet, so definitely go head over there right after this. If not, then thanks for sticking through the video, I've been Paul, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, peace.